It's Derby Weekend and yes, welcome along to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel for our weekend preview and like I say, a massive weekend with the Epsom Derby taking place. Jack and I are going to be covering four races and four big group ones on this week's preview. We're going to be covering the Coronation Cup and the Oaks on the Friday. We'll have the Derby on the Saturday and then we'll be also looking at the Qatar Prix de Jockey Club, the French Derby on Sunday from France. And it's one of those where I was intending to film this out in France because I was getting out there so late. We wanted to bring the preview forward to you as quick as possible. And, and it's the best thing that we can do, but you will get some exclusive content. I will send some stuff on my social media along with some stuff on the next gen social media that you'll be able to see over the weekend. Jack, I don't know what you're like, but I mean, I'm heading out in the morning to France. And if you can see behind me, I've actually got all of my stuff laid out on the bed. I'm not the most organized pack. I'll probably be doing it about an hour before I leave. What are you like when you go on holiday? Um, probably it depends actually where I'm going and how excited I am for it. I mean, if I was going away for the the jockey club, I'd imagine I'd probably be packed, ready to go. Probably in bed now, really. <laughs> but um, but no, it depends. I'm not usually the most organised, but if it was for the jockey club, I'd like to think so. Yeah, absolutely. Ten race card out there on Sunday. Honestly, loads of people in the comments saying, why am I heading there and why am I not heading to Epsom? Honestly, a ten race card cost me £4 to get into the course. And there's group threes. There's one group three, three group twos, two listed contests, and obviously the Prix de Jacques Club. It's an excellent day. If you do get your chance to go to France racing, I really do recommend it. It's some experience. But let's get into the previews then. Like I say, four races to get from. We start off on Friday with the free ten at Epsom, which is the mile and a half coronation cup a group one part of the british champion series and westover tops the market at two to one emily upjohn is three to one hurricane lane seven to two point lonsdale is five to one and the german raider tunnis is 14 to one um i'll start i don't usually start with the first race but i'll start and i won't say anything about what you're going to put up jack because i know what you're going to put up but I'm going to say that Emily Upjohn's probably going to come out and just win this. I think 3-1 is actually more than a fair price for John and Fady Gosden and, and Frankie Dottori team here. We've got to remember this was we hardly saw her at two years old. Um, when she did run, she actually won by a neck at Wolverhampton, beating a now-rated 88-rated horse of Godolphins. And look, this shows what a horse can do, stepping from two to three. And, and what she did on, on first start as a three-year-old at Sandown was absolutely exceptional. She then went on to run a massive race in the Musadora, winning by five plus lengths. And then, you know, she was second in an Oaks, but she was desperately unlucky. We all know that. And, and uh, some of us, I was actually watching it at Goodwood at the time and saw it on the big screen. A lot of us thought she had actually got up on the line. And, you know, she's a very talented filly. We obviously can tell that she runs some of her best races towards the start of the season. She's not going to mind the quick going whatsoever she's back at epsom where like i say she she was close enough to winning an oaks last season i think three to one is a more than fair price so i'm going to be i'm going to be going with emily up john in the coronation cup jack who are you going to be going with it's a cracking race isn't it um you got four at what seven to two i suppose point on there, four to one or shorter then you got the outside of the field of course tunnis on ratings that is just plain wrong of course westover's highest rated 119 tunnis and hurricane lena a pound off him back on 118 look um westover hasn't done anything wrong has he except that run in the king george he obviously i would say pushed equinox i mean he followed equinox home i think is the right way of putting it was obviously sit in a derby and ground wasn't really to his favor hacked up in the irish derby i mean he is definitely the one to beat but he has that blipping in the same can be said for emily upjohn as well but it was nice to see her regain that bit of form last year on champions day you got hurricane lane of course massive blip um on season reappearance but then bolted up in good style last time out it was nice to see him retain that ability that he had as a three-year-old a lot of people were questioning whether he still had that and point lonsdale look he's as game as workman like as anything isn't he i think the, the top four are very hard to split of course as you know i'm going to be going for the rank outside of tunnus um here he's best prize 14 to 1 i'm going to take 5 to 1 about him to finish in the top two places it's it is the same old story that the German Raider gets overlooked. We see it time and time again. He was pretty disappointing when he was turned over at odds on last time out um, at Cologne. And yes, he is going to be better on, on on softer ground. There's a slight question mark with Epsom as well. I know he trains at Cologne in the flat track going to Epsom. May not suit him, but he absolutely hacks up in the, in the German St. Ledger. He finished ninth at Tokyo in the Japan Cup. And you completely write that off. He was slowly away. He was wide. Didn't think ground's too much of an issue. Of course, he's a half-brother to Torquata Tasso. And Sam, uh, I mean, I, I know you're smirking there, but today I said to Sam, I said, because I can't quite get on with one or two bookmakers, I said to Sam, oh, there's five to one offered about um, Tunnister finishing in the top two. Um, 
would you lay me? Uh, and he was like, oh, goodness me. Well, he won't, he'll, he'll get lapped on a race course. He can't even get lapped at was the quote unquote from Sam, which he said. And I said, oh, perfect. So you can lay me five to one. Then he went, oh, no, I wouldn't be laying him. I, I was trying to get my head around it. I've been berated for backing this German horse, yet I've asked for five to one about a price on a horse who's going to get lapped. And Sam, you won't lay me. If if I laid every horse that I said was going to get absolutely smashed, Jack, honestly, I'd be a very poor man. But the one thing I'd say about Tannis, and I don't know how much you've read into this, Jack, but you've, you've mentioned a few negatives there with regards to the quick going and also the fact that, you know, running at Epsom a completely different track. But looking at the form of the horse that beat this horse um, at Cologne, the horse came then, then came out and finished sixth for sixth for the winner. I think it was assistant sixth for six by about eight lengths, beaten by a horse called Northern Ruler, who since you know before that was actually a well beaten. I think at Longchamp was well beaten in a listed race. I cannot have this horse at all. I'm not even sure where why the twenty to ones turn into fourteen to one during today. I really don't. Um, I think this is a very good race, like Jack says, bar tennis. I could be completely or I could be made to look a right mug here. I really could. And those who have watched kind of the, the next gen racing YouTube channel throughout the season will know that Jack's put this horse up for the arc. Um, a few reasons why, obviously the soft ground um, being an advantage and also the, the Torcata Tasso family vibe is also in there as well. So look, fair play, Jack. Look, I've got nothing against it, but I have said what I've said. I've got to stick to what I say. I could be made to look an absolute mug on Friday. I could end up having a, a picture of me sent, a picture of you sent to me in France, basically, of you celebrating like mad. But unfortunately, Jack, I just don't think that Tannis is good enough. So it is what it is. No, that's fair enough. I mean, of course, when there's four runners who are four to one or shorter, goodness me, Sam's not going to be looking at the outside of the field, is he? That'd be very unlike Sam thing to do. He'll just stick right at the top there. Stick right at the top. But I, I know I know you're looking for obviously last time out. Westover was beaten by the likes of Hu Yamal uh, last year, of course, in the Derby. So there's kind of a bit of crestable and grand glory as well in the arc and his favourite here at two to one. So look, I mean, you can pick holes in, in all of their form. You can indeed. Um, and talking about horses that I like towards the top of the market, let's move on to the Epsom Oaks at 4.30. The Betfred Oaks over a mile and a half, obviously for the fillies and the three-year-olds. And Save the Last Dance is the 11 to 8 good thing. Soul Sister is 5 to 2. Running Lion is 6 to 1. Eternal Hope supplemented for the race for Team Goodolf in 12 to 1. Heartache Tonight has come for a fair bit of money, 33 to 1 into 20s for the David Manuzio team. And we're looking at 33 to 1. And bigger the rest. Um, save the last dance for me, Jack. Um, I think she's going to be way too good. I think she's actually going to look even better on quicker going come this weekend. I think she's going to become the favourite for the Arc de Triomphe, which often happens with an Oaks winner. We tend to see it fairly often. The Epsom Oaks winner does go very short, probably around 4-1, to 9-2 to for an Arc, especially if they're really impressive. Do not get me wrong, I think Soul Sister was very, very good in the Moose Door. I think it was a very slowly run race, turned into a sprint at the finish, but what she did was very impressive. I just think, say, the last dance could be a little bit better. I think Running Lion has been very impressed this season. Murphy's obviously had a a real love for this horse for obvious reasons, but I'd actually rather see this horse, and it could still happen, see this horse in the Prix de Diane, where I think she could be a, a fair bit better over a mile and a quarter. But Eternal Hope's obviously fascinating with regards to supplementation. That was a, an excellent run at Lingfield. Do I rate an all-weather run? Can I really base the form off that, kind of giving a case for that? Not really. The supplementation is very interesting. She's obviously shown plenty at home to you know make it worthy for them to put her in here, but... I think save the last dance. I know what she did in the Cheshire Oaks was on soft ground. I know, you know, it can be a bit of a mess, but it was very impressive on the clock. And like I say, she could just be a little bit better on quicker going as well, but we'll have to wait and see. Jack, I'm with the favourite. I do apologise, but it, it is hard to get away from her. Yeah, it is. But I tell you what, if you put up, up anything bigger than three to one, you might get a nosebleed, Sam. So you just be careful <laughs> with those, OK? No, look, I, I think the Oaks this year, it's it's a funny old race, isn't it? I can't really fancy anything, tell you the truth. Um, there's just nothing in there. I mean, I was kind of looking towards the bottom of the market to try and find something to, to stick my neck out for. Heartache tonight, of course, be unbelievable to see um, 
wonderful tonight at half sister to win this. That would be absolutely brilliant. Um, I think she'll just probably want a little bit softer uh, underfoot. And, of course, she'll probably want further in time. So it's interesting to see a bit of money come for her. Of course, Eternal Hope uh, being supplemented is, is a big plus. But um, I'll probably take on Save the Last Dance with Soul Sister at double the price. More just the price thing. She was very impressive last time out. you got that Frankie factor as well. I know I, I, I kind of slate for Frankie every so often, but I think if he's got a chance of winning uh, in the Oaks here, he's going to try and get his classic here on the weekend straight away, if he can do. But look, I think of the front three or four, I'd go for, for Soul Sister and more of a price point of view. But also, uh, Price, Sea of Roses is 50 to 1. I know she's coming out of stall one, but I thought when she was staying on in France on a penultimate run, I know you've actually put up Sea of Roses. Mm. This is probably her. She does run a big race, but she was staying on over that mile and a quarter. If the Moustora did turn into a massive sprint, which it looks like it did, perhaps she's going to be a little bit better over further. I know she's 50 to 1 at this moment in time, but she's um, related to, to Desert Icon, who won in Australia over a mile and a half. So perhaps this mile and a half trip will actually suit her. She hung left-handed last time out. Hopefully she's matured a little bit from that run in the Moustadora. But um, Sea of Roses is 50 to 1, and I'll be taking Soul Sister at 5 to 2. I completely agree. I think Sea of Rose is interesting. She was obviously put up by myself on the anti-post series and she was beaten by a horse called Ponce du Jour who is very short for the Prix de Diane currently and Ponce du Jour ran a, a, she was doing some lovely bits of work out in France midweek that was on social media um, and she could be very smart but I agree Sea of Roses is interesting and, and will probably suit a much quicker pace but Jack will be with Soul Sister as his main selection and I'll be with Save the last dance. I feel like in the comments this week, people shouldn't be just putting their naps in. They should say, who's going to be having a better weekend out of our selections, me or you? We'll have to wait. You've got two more races to go through and see what people in the comments have to say. And we move on to Saturday now with the early time of 1.30 at Epsom for the Betfred Derby over a mile and a half for the Colts. And um, this is going to be interesting to see whether I put up a favourite in this. But August Rodan is 11-4, to four, Military Order 9-2, to two, Passenger the unlucky horse in the Dante five to one arrest, another Chester winner at thirteen to two. Spreewell is eleven to one. The Fox is the Dante winner is twelve to one. Dubai at mile is fourteen to one along with White Birch and twenty to one and bigger about the rest of the field in the Derby. Um, I will come to you first on this one, Jack. I spoke last week about how you know we can forgive horses and Little Big Bear was the one that we mainly talked about what happened in the Guineas and then we see the horse bounce back and put up a performance to make him a very short price for the Commonwealth Cup last weekend. And, and now we see August Rodan make a return on quicker going, which will suit this horse over the trip that he's looking for. The plan's been the Derby all season, Vaden O'Brien. Is the 11 to 4 maybe still a fair price? I wouldn't quite say it's a fair price, but it's probably one of those prices where in three months' time and he's racked off three easy wins. You go, goodness me, how did he go off three to one for the Derby? But it's one of those that I'll just happily let win. Same as Little Big Bear. I know he's double the price, but I'll happily go let him win because it's one of those that if you back him at 11 to four and he finishes out the back of the frame, you think, what was I doing? Like, what on earth was I doing? But look, I mean, I read a fabulous article by Simon Rowlands on the, the striding patterns of um of the winners of the derby. And he does fit the frame quite nicely. So he, he may be able to bounce back, of course, this mile and a half trip. He's always been middle distance. Anything that he did in the guineas was a was a, a bit of a bonus. Of course, you saw Little Big Bear bounce back. That's a massive boost of confidence if you are an August Rodin fan. It's an interesting race. I've got two in the race. I am going to stick with Passenger. He was so unlucky in the Dante. I think he's just such a strong traveller. I mean, it's, it'd be really nice to see Richard Kingscote kind of travelling as strongly as he was on Desert Crown last year, just down the outside. And then when he pushes the button, I mean, we saw a rapid change of gear and on debut at Newmarket. And then, of course, last time out, didn't quite get to see that. But I was zooming and ahhing whether he's going to get the mile and a half. I mean, the Dante didn't quite say that, especially uh, shed any light on that. Sorry. Um, but hopefully he'll be able to get it. I'm not too sure. His breeding suggests he's going to get it. Five to one, I'd say slightly on the skinny side. I'd say probably seven to one's a, a fair enough price. But Pasture's the first one. The second is Waipiru. I mean, he's, four, he's three, four times the price of military order. And I don't think he was beaten all that comfortably. He kind of hung a little bit left in the straight. It had to kind of, he lost his momentum, had to be straightened up as well. And he's probably going to get a little bit further as well. He has a change of gear. We saw that at Newmarket as well. And I think Wipe here at 20 to 1, I still think that's a massive price. So that's the two for me. It'd be Wipe here at 20 to 1 and Passenger at 5 to 1. There we go. And you might be surprised to see me venture outside the top 
four, top four Ooh. in the market, and I'm going to go for a two at two at double figure price. And I'm going to be with Spreewell as my first selection for the Jessica Harrington's team. I mean, how amazing would this be after what's happened with Jessie this year to see her win the Derby? It would be a, an unbelievable story. Look, this horse as a two-year-old didn't really show too much, but as a three-year-old has looked something else. Um, an excellent winner at Nace and then a, a superb winner at Leopardstown, both on soft ground. But look at the breeding of this horse by Churchill out of a mare who really did like quick conditions so you'd imagine this horse would be absolutely fine on the going and could even be a bit like save the last dance just as good if not a little bit better i think this horse is showing plenty of improvement could take a massive step forward jess carrington very excited by this horse i think 11 to 1 is a more than fair price and the other one is the horse that finished second in the dante and it's white birch who this is a gorgeous horse and the name white birch it really does show when you see this horse running a, a beautiful gray but this horse, I thought, ran an excellent race and will only be suited, very similar to the way Jack described Sea of Roses, to a much quicker pace. Um, I know the Dante wasn't run at a, you know, a, a horrendously slow pace, but I just think that over a, 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 you know, a further trip of a couple of furlongs, along with a quick pace, I think this horse could be even better. He was definitely staying on well at line. I think the Foxes was doing enough in front, but I think White Birch, if being in a better position, did get caught on hills at a kind of into the straight and then came flying down the rail and I've got a feeling he's going to run a massive race. Colin Keane is jocked up to take the ride. 14 to 1 is a big price because what White Birch did, I think it was a, an Aidan O'Brien hot pot he beat on debut as a three-year-old, one that Aidan O'Brien had put up as the next big thing. Um, I think this horse is, has got so much ability. Um, I think he could actually be very, very smart and he could actually be one for the ledger as well. If you're looking for one in here that could go on to the ledger, it is this one. It's Alex Andropolis is the horse he beat. I've just had to check that. But that horse was put up as Aidan O'Brien as one of the horses to follow. And it wouldn't be surprised to see that horse come out and run a massive race again soon. So 14 to 1 about White Birch, I think is far too big. Along with Spreewell at 11 to 1. And Jack will be with Passenger at 5 to 1. And Wipiro, who Ed Walker said he wouldn't put anyone off having a few quid each way at 20 to 1. Let's move on over to France then where I will be on Sunday for the Jockey Club and this is a really good race in itself as well. Big Rock is the 2-1 to one favourite. Feed the Flame is the 9-2 to two second favourite. Military Order is in here at 13-2 to two, but will not be running. Continuous is 7-1. to one. Mahabi Yasanafi the Poulain winner is 8-1. to one. American Flag is around 9-1 to one, and then double figures about the rest of the field. Um, we know the kind of Connection I have with the Christopher Head stable. We know I'm a massive fan of theirs. It was excellent to see them land the first classic of, of his career with um, Blue Rose Sen in the Prix de Police. She's now going into the jockey club with a, a superb looking horse in Big Rock who won the, the best trial that you can have really for the jockey club in the Prix de Guiche here. And, and that was over a, a mile and one furlong, just a furlong short of what they'll be running on Sunday. I think he's just extremely talented. I think he's going to do exactly what he did in the Prix de Guiche. He's going to go out in front and take horses out of their comfort zone. And that is probably the way that he can do this. And if he's got the cruising power that Christopher Head thinks he has, and if you haven't seen it, do check it out on YouTube. Sky, uh, Sky Sports Racing did an excellent little piece of him. Listen to what he had to say about Big Rock. He thinks this horse's cruising power is incredible over a trip like this and he's got a feeling that he's going to be mighty tough to beat. I actually think he's going to be heavily gambled on the day as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go off 11 to 10 favourite. Feed the Flames form has worked out really well. Do not get me wrong. This is his main danger and it shows in the betting. He is a superb horse. The second since come out and won. The third had won by about nine lengths I think prior to running in um, into the race that Feed the Flames in. So they're the two that I'd be with. I think Continuous has got a bit to prove. Obviously interesting having a no Brian have one in the race. Uh, well, he's got a few in there, but being his number one hope is obviously interesting. I'll probably end up seeing a bigger price about Continuous on the day out in France on the PMU, so it might be one each way, but I'm going to be a big rock, Jack. I have to be there. It'll be an excellent story. I'll be at the yard on Saturday. We'll probably have a picture of me and Big Rock on the next gen socials come Saturday ahead of the race. But look, some story if I can see him go and win there, but two to one, is it too short? I tell you what, I actually don't think it is. Um, I was just kind of just umming and ahhing over my head when you said you see him going off 11 to 10. I was thinking, oh, I actually kind of completely agree. I, when you told me he was 2 to 1, I thought he'd probably be about 6 to 4, 11 to 8. I really wouldn't be surprised if he does go off 6 to 4. Mm -hmm. You've got to feed the flame, of course, that piece of form last time out. The second has since gone and won a group three, um, as you mentioned there. But look, Big Rock showed a really nice turn of foot. He's a very strong traveller. And more than, more than anything, I really hope he goes and does it for you. Um, it'd be brilliant for you to be there and have that 
alliance with the Christopher Head team and for them to do it. So I'll be definitely cheering him on for you. But as you said, I can't really see him going off any bigger than six to four on the day. I'll have a proper look. Of course, we don't have the official entries that are kind of outsiders to see if there's anything that may be able to squeak a place or potentially even turn over the favourite. But I think Feed the Flames got a lot to find. Looks more of kind of like a mile and a half contender than this trip. That's for sure. As Big Rock definitely showed that turn of foot that you need to be able to win a Breeders Jockey Club. So Sam, I'm going to be with you with Big Rock. I'll be cheering you on as well on Sunday and hopefully you'll be able to go and do it for you. Yeah, let's hope so. I'm really looking forward to that on Sunday. An excellent race in Big Rock is going to be the fancy of myself and Jack. Um, I've got one other selection this week um, away from the group ones that we've covered and it comes in the Princess Elizabeth Stakes, the group three at Epsom on Saturday. It's in the 2.10 over just over a mile and I quite like the look of Heredia at 8-1 for the Richard Hannon team who have been in really good flying form and this horse here, I know this, this horse ran at the start of the season in May um, in a six furlong race. It was actually against Azure Blue who has since come out and, and won obviously at York and Perdica ran a really good race in France. He finished third that day. Heredia was second and I just have a feeling that on quicker ground, stepped up in trip, I think she could run an absolutely massive race. I'm actually a big fan of her ever since she won on good to firm ground in that Royal Ascot. Um, I think it was a Sandrian, wasn't it, last season? She looked mightily impressive, and we know what she's like on good ground. I think 8-1 to one could be far too big. I think Prosperous Voyage is a very good horse. I think 2-1, to one, but maybe looking for a, a bit of... Uh, given the ground and Potter Pover, what happened at Goodwood would worry me slightly, ran on heavy ground, pulled up, didn't look right. If they can get this horse back on, on a quicker going and, and back to the form that she can show, I think, you know, she could become very good, but she's on the drift, which does put me off a little bit as well. So I'll take the eight to one about Heredia in the Princess Elizabeth Stakes. Jack, have you got anything else for the weekend? Yeah, fair play, Sam. That's a good case you made there. I love her idea. Um, She's a great filly. Yeah, in the woodcut, I'm a big fan of Hartem. We watched him make his debut at Goodwood. I thought he was a big, imposing two-year-old. I think over kind of seven furlongs of the two-year-old, I thought he'd be uh, quite a quite a, a cool customer. He was staying on third that day over five and a half furlongs, stepped up, uh, over five furlongs, sorry, stepped up to five and a half furlongs last time out, one in good style, put them to bed by six lengths in a much weaker race. And now, of course, is in the woodcut here. He's second favourite at five to one, but I was a big fan of his. I think he's going to be staying on at the line. Hopefully, he'll be good enough. These two-year-old races are, are somewhat of a lottery, but I think hard Tem at five to one in the two o'clock at Epsom on Friday could go close. Heart M for Jack in the two o'clock on Friday, the Woodcut, the yeah, five to one, maybe a fair price. That was a really weird show that we've just done because I feel like we started the show where me and you were just giving each other a bit of stick and then we just kind of showed some love to each other at the end where we started to agree on selections and started to say, oh, what a lovely case. How nice is that? <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was, it was a weird one. You're right. We need to mix the tough tough love with the friendship as well. Everyone doesn't want to see us agreeing all the time. So there you go, eh? Don't worry, everyone. Jack and I are best of friends, really, and, and we'll, <laughs> we'll always be here. There's there's no divorce ever going to happen. The Next Gen Racing <laughs> channel does go on. Um, we won't get um, a next best, but we'll always get our naps of the weekend. And I'll kick things off. Going to be very obvious. Is going to be short, but two to one. Big Rock in the Parida Jockey Club will be my nap this weekend. Jack, yourself. Oh, that's a great question. I am going to go with, I'm not going to go to Tunnels to finish in the top two. Don't worry, Sam. I think Passenger is going to go very close in the derby. Okay, Passenger around, uh, I think, five, six to one shot for the derby is a more than fair price, according to Jack. Very unlucky in that, Dante. So best of luck with that selection there. Like I say, get your comments in down below. Get those naps in. Let us know who you're going to be back in. Let us know who you think is going to have a better weekend out of myself and Jack after the, the argument after the start of the show. Let us know who you think is going to have the best weekend. We'd be very interested to know. We'll be back next weekend for our weekend preview. We'll be probably doing a quick review of the, the two classics um, at the start of the show, but then we'll be previewing the weekend action, covering all of the main races from your Saturdays and Sundays. As always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's free to do so. Just click that button and give us some love. Give the video a like. Get those comments in. Share these videos. And we will see you next weekend. Enjoy the derby.